Hello everyone, my name is Ashutosh Bahuguna. I am scientist with Indian Computer Emergency Response Team. In this session, we are going to discuss about the cyber security assurance, the methods and practices used by different entities, the countries to generate a cyber security assurance at an organization level, at a sector level, and at a national level. In this session, we are going to discuss about, first we have to understand uh, what the assurance is. So, assurance and benchmarking. Assurance, we can say, is the state of mind in which one is free from doubt. So, it is defined in IS, ISO IAC TR 15443-2012, Information Technology Security Techniques, Security Assurance Framework. That assurance as demonstrated ability of an entity to perform its security objectives. So assurance is a different from a confidence. It's, uh, it's driven by the facts. So we have a confidence on some state, but it's driven by the facts. So it's uh, determined from the evidence produced by the assessment process of an entity. So we do the assessment, generate the evidence, and then we have the assurance. Similarly, the definition of the benchmarking goes like the, it's, uh, the benchmarking is the evaluation against the any standard um, or the best practices. So these are the fundamentals of the assurance and benchmarking. So there are uh, several studies done by the different organizations like uh, United Nations, uh, like ITU, and they generated a different type of uh, assurance and benchmarking of, on uh, cyber security uh, domain. So the cyber security posture assessment and assurance practices implemented by 16 countries were studied to understand the global scenario, what is going on globally uh, to generate assurance in cyber security. And uh, we tried to identify the different methods adopted for cyber security assurance at a national level. So how we can achieve the um, cyber security assurance at a national level was the objective of this study. So for that 16 countries were selected. So following models and data were considered for the study uh, like a cyber index from United Nations, community cyber security maturity model, cyber readiness index, national cyber security maturity models and we try to figure out uh, that how these models and frameworks uh, help in generating the assurance in cyber security domain at a national level. So uh, we consider this is from the ITU and uh, they have the global cyber security index and cyber wellness profiles of the countries. So what that they have in the framework is the uh, these five domain in which they done the study for a country that how they are doing in terms of a cyber security. So global cyber security index provides insight into cyber security engagement of countries, profile and index generated by country level surveys and qualitative research. So these domains were identified in GCI and cyber wellness profiles by ITU. The first one is the legal measures. So how the country is doing in the criminal legislation, regulation and compliance in cyber space. Then there are a technical measures taken by the country like a computer emergency response team, computer security incident response teams, national or a sector specific computer emergency response teams, standards and the certifications. Then the third is the organization level measures like the, they have a national policy on cyber security, roadmap for the governments, responsible agencies and is there anything done in the domain of national benchmarking in cyber security. So those are considered under the organizational measures. Then there is a category 4 on the capacity building, whether there is a standardization development, manpower development, professional certification, agency certification in domain of a cyber space and then the cooperation so how the country is doing uh, in as for a cyber security the intra state cooperation intra agency cooperation public private partnership and the international cooperation so under these domains the perform the studies performed and the rank to the country 
that how they are doing in a cyber security it's assigned and uh, their uh, wellness profile is prepared and these these data is available in a public domain so you can go through the cyber security profiles of a different countries uh, you can go through in details that how the countries are doing in the legal measures technical measures organization measures what kind of a, what sort of a initiatives are there in a capacity building and the cooperation in a cyber security so after digging into the data analyzing that data for the those 16 countries we have identified these are the significant categories these are the practices and methods which were used for generating the assurance at the national level like we can see there is a cyber security development report so many countries are having a annual reports on a cyber security development uh, that may include the uh, type of the vulnerabilities identified the incident handled and the type of the initiative taken to improve the cyber security posture of a country cyber security exercises another category widely adopted by the countries for doing the preparedness assessment for create generating the awareness to improving the mutual relationship of the entities participating in the exercises so cyber security exercises is one of the most important tool a significant category for generating that sort of assurance then there is a statistical data and trend reports which generated from the incident and the threats to the country or a sector so those data generally from the national computer emergency response team or sector computer emergency response team and the data is generated and used for generating the assurance and to find the trends and the what sort of a cyber security status of a country is then there are cyber security compliance and audits so in some cases the governments or sectors or as per the compliance and regulatory requirements uh, the entities were asked to do the compliance and audits uh, so that was also used but it's not done for the uh, entire country since it's not possible so it's generally done for the critical infrastructure or the limited uh, sectors so that is also used to generate uh, cyber security assurance a few countries implemented the maturity models and indexes um, uh, those are the standards uh, framework uh, they try to implement to measure the maturity of uh, the country the scale they are doing the cyber security initiatives in some cases countries nations have done the cyber security survey so what they have done is that they collected their data in some cases from the citizens also in others the from the businesses and critical sectors and try to understand the posture of the cyber security in the country in some cases there is a cyber security related laws and regulation and uh, set up of supervisory agency so cyber security related laws and regulations are implemented to ensure uh, to have a better preparedness in the domain of cyber security so these were the significant categories which across the globe the countries are implementing to uh, improve their cyber security posture so if we look into the india that how the cyber security assurance in india so what type of the things we have and what type of initiative we have done in uh, generating the assurance at a national level is that uh, we have cyber security maturity ladder prepared and customized for the country and uh, there are a moderator driven self assessment of the critical organizations to identify their cyber security preparedness we have the remote profiling services in which the agency or a team act as the attacker to generate a profile security profile to identify the security posture of the target organization and critical sectors we have the incident trends and reports we are generating those reports trend and understanding the trends uh, on the cyber security domain we have a monthly and annual reports on a cyber security development and initiatives in country there is a impanelment of auditing organizations in paneling based on the skill set of auditing organizations so they can do the compliance audit technical audits vulnerability assessment penetration testing of the 
government and critical sector organizations to generate assurance. Then there is a national cyber crisis management plan and incident response plans are prepared so that if there is a crisis or any incident, the entities or a sector or a country can respond according to that plan. Cyber security exercise as a tool is considered very important in India and adopted in various methods, various type of exercises conducted to generate the assurance, confidence to assess the preparedness and improve the cyber security posture of the entity. So let's see now the roadmap. If we have to achieve within an organization how to be better prepared to counter the cyber attack, how to improve the cyber security posture. So what should be the, our roadmap? What should the organization do? So the first thing is to understand what the information is and uh, what the information security. So if we go by the definition, it's the CIA, confidentiality, integrity and availability. And uh, there is a standard for that, Information Security Management System, ISO, IEC, uh, 27,000 series of uh, standards. So 27,001 is the, for the certification against the Information Security Management System. In 2013 version, there are a 114 controls in 14 different groups. So like A5 is the Information Security Policies. Then how Information Security is organized? Then how human resource security controls that are applied before, during or after employment. So these all things, this ISMS, ISO 27000 standards bring the information security under the management controls. So it's having a category asset management, access control and managing the user access, cryptographic technology to be implemented in an organization entity. Physical security of organization sites and equipment, operational security, secure communication and data transfer, secure acquisition, development and support of information systems, security for suppliers and third parties, and incident management. So you can see, you can implement the ISO 27001 standard for achieving the information security management system to protect the information. That's our the overall and uh, the ultimate objective. So into the information security, when we are trying to do information security, we have a various verticals. At, as we can see from the controls and the, as per ISO 27001, when we talk about this connected world in a cyber space, that is a little bit complex from the other verticals. Other verticals means from the physical security or, or the human resource security. So we, we may need a, a separate framework for doing the cyber security. So if you are doing that, the NIST cyber security framework is the uh, approach which can be implemented to improve the cyber security within an organization. So this NIST cyber security framework is the risk based approach to managing cyber security risk and is having a composed of three parts which is the framework core, framework implementation ties and framework profiles. So framework core is a set of cyber security activities, desired outcomes and applicable references that are common across critical sectors. So there are five components which are the cyber security activities need to be done. So these five components are identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. The framework is available in a public domain from NIST website. You can get it and go through it. So here are the functions we have to do like a, a we already have discussed these five. So what you need to be done in an identify category, identify functions, there are categories and subcategories defined in the framework and then there are references to other like ISO 27001 and other standards. Uh, what type of uh, categories and subcategories need to be done in a product? Then detect if there is some attack going on, some abnormal behavior in infrastructure. Respond to those attacks, response to those threats and then recover if there is an incident on your infrastructure. So that's the how the framework helps in improving the cyber security. 
The cyber security capability maturity model. So these maturity models can also be used to improve the cyber security preparedness of our organization. It also helps to measure the current state of preparedness of an entity. So cyber security capability maturity model can be used by organizations to enhance its own cyber security capabilities. So the basically the maturity models helps in it defines the current state. It help you to assess where you stand today, determine its future, more mature state, where you have to go, and uh, identify the capabilities, what type sorts of action you need to attend uh, that future state, what you need to do to achieve that future state. So that's the cyber security capability maturity models. Those models can be adopted by our organization to improve the cyber security. So maturity uh, indicator labels, the model defines four immaturity indicators level from this uh, level zero to uh, level three. And there are 10 domains under this C to M2 model. So these 10 model domains are listed here. Risk management, asset change and configuration management, identity and access management, threat and vulnerability management, situational awareness, information sharing and communications, event and incident response, continuity of operation, supply chain and external dependency management, workforce management, cyber security program management. So in these 10 domains, what are the maturity level of an organization? So maturity level zero to maturity level three is assigned to those 10 domains to measure and then what the organization need to do to further improve their maturity. So these models can be used to assess the current state and determine the future state of the organization. So sometimes you may not be able to implement the complete framework due to the lack of resources or budget. So uh, what you can have is the CIS 20 critical security controls. So these are the 20 list of 20 critical security controls. These are the recommended set of actions for cyber defense that provide a specific and actionable way to stop today's most pervasive and dangerous attack. So this 20 controls, if implemented, will help, help you to counter the most dangerous attacks. So these are the prioritized list and focus a small number of actions with high payoff results. So these are focus on the what the 20 things we have to do to protect against the cyber attacks. The controls are effective because they are derived from the most common attack patterns highlighted in the leading threat reports and vetted across a very broad community of government and industry practitioners. So this is the way that list is prepared and maintained. So what is there in a list is uh, such as the inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices. The organization must maintain the inventory of what is authorized and unauthorized hardware devices in their environment. They should have the capability to detect that. Inventory of authorized and unauthorized software in their infrastructure that capability the organization should have. Secure configurations, templates for hardware and software on mobile devices, laptop, workstation and servers should be maintained. Continuous vulnerability assessment and remediation need to be done. Controlled use of administrative privileges, maintenance, monitoring and analysis of audit logs. Seventh is the email and web browser protection need to be implemented. Malware defense, anti-malware solution, antivirus solution need to be implemented in organization. And uh, services, ports and protocols should be limited as per the need only. And uh, there should be the data recovery capability within our organization. Secure configuration for network devices such as firewalls, router and switches. The boundary defense, boundary protection devices like intrusion detection system, firewalls, intrusion prevention system need to be implemented. Data protection, data leak protection need to be implemented in our organization. Control access based on the need to know. So access should be provided based on the need to know. And uh, wireless access control, account monitoring and control, security skills assessment and appropriate training to fill gaps in the Employee, we have to do that assessment and we have to provide them training and conduct the awareness programs also. Application software security, the code level security, the secure software development life cycle. Then the 19th is the we must have the incident response and management. 
and the penetration tests and that time exercises need to be conducted by the organizers. So these are the list of 20 controls and these are regularly updated. It's also available from the CIS Center for Security website. You can download 20 controls. There you will also find that how to implement these controls, how to automate these controls, how to do the assessment against these controls. So this is the list of 20 controls which can be implemented to generate the assurance within our organization. Sometimes it may be difficult for an organization to do even the 20 things. So what is the way to go ahead to do with the minimum things? So we call it the cybersecurity must haves. So at least implement the five controls. So here we listed the five top controls which can be used by your organization to start with. So this is the inventory of a hardware and a software. So organizations should maintain the inventory of hardware and the software within our organization so that it can be determine what is authorized and what is unauthorized. The secure configurations of our hardware, mobile devices need to be implemented. There should be continuous vulnerability management. If there is a vulnerability in a system, in a server, in an infrastructure or a device, then it should be the pass. Then there should be the control use of administrative privileges should not be distributed to all and it should only be provided in a control manner. Anti-malware solution, antivirus solution is a requirement of these five controls so that need to be implemented. So in this session we have discussed about the cyber security assurance and benchmarking practices followed by the different countries. We have done the analysis and uh, uh, discussion on the methods and practices such as the cyber security exercises, annual reports and how the countries can adopt the cyber security assurance uh, methods to generate the assurance at a national level, sector level and organization level. We have also seen the what is the possible roadmap for the organization to improve their cyber security preparedness by following the cyber security must have 20 critical controls, list of cyber security framework and information security management system. Thank you.